The learning objective of this chapter is to highlight the International Maritime Organization's requirements for the carriage of cargo securing manuals, some limitations of cargo securing manuals, extracts from the Occupational Safety and Health Administration regulations that apply to container ships calling at U.S. ports, a possible implication for masters of chartered vessels, and the responsibilities of ship owners with respect to container lashing gear. We often relate environmental damage with oil pollution, but pollution is also caused by seepage of dangerous cargoes, such as chemicals and marine pollutants, from containers that fell overboard from ships during heavy weather. Several maritime incidents that occurred in the early 1990s focused the attention of the maritime community on the dangers of improperly secured cargoes and containers aboard ships. After the United States Coast Guard and other authorities carried out extensive investigations, it was concluded that these incidents led to serious injury or death, loss of ships, loss of cargoes, and damage to property and or the environment. For the U.S. Coast Guard, a high-profile incident occurred off New Jersey in 1992. During a voyage in heavy weather, a ship lost 21 containers. Four of these contained arsenic trioxide, a highly toxic hazardous material. The U.S. Coast Guard therefore called for a board of inquiry to investigate several other incidents that occurred during the early 1990s. The board found that container losses were caused by cargo securing failures related to heavy weather and or human error. In 1981, the International Maritime Organization adopted voluntary guidelines to improve the standards of stowage and securing of containers on non-cellular container ships. The U.S. government made a recommendation to the IMO that the voluntary guidelines, which called for the carriage of cargo securing manuals, CSMs, on ships, be made mandatory. With the support of other IMO member governments, the United States led a proposal to include new requirements for CSMs. These requirements were included in the Safety of Life at Sea, or SOLAS, Convention. The requirements were adopted as part of the 1994 amendments to SOLAS, Chapters 6 and 7. In 1991, the Code of Safe Practice for Cargo Stowage and Securing, commonly known as CSS, was adopted by the IMO. Its purpose was to provide an international standard for the safe stowage and securing of cargoes and containers on board certain types and sizes of ships. When the 1994 amendments to SOLAS entered into force on the 1st of July 1996, the CSS became mandatory. It was included in Chapter 6 of SOLAS. By the 31st of December 1997, carriage of an approved CSM became mandatory. Every new container ship and all ships of 500 gross tons and above engaged in the carriage of cargoes other than solid and liquid bulk cargoes were required to carry an approved CSM. SOLAS 6-5 requires cargo to be loaded, stowed and secured throughout the voyage in accordance with an approved CSM. CSMs must provide up-to-date information and guidance that will assist a vessel's master and crew on the proper usage of equipment available to adequately stow and secure containers. CSMs contain calculations with very fine tolerances, leaving little room for error, especially when vessels operate in heavy weather. Container lashing should be carried out in accordance with instructions contained in the CSM. A CSM must be approved either by the ship's flag state or by its classification society on behalf of the flag state. Some CSMs provide advice in the event of a vessel encountering heavy weather. The advice includes avoiding excessive accelerations, course and or speed alterations to reduce ship motions, adjusting ballast so that ship motions, such as rolling, can be controlled, and measures to avoid the onset of resonant rolling. Other information contained in the CSM should include 1. A general container arrangement plan 2. Container lashing methods 3. Details and locations of fixed securing arrangements, such as pad eyes, eye bolts, etc. 4. Details, strength and locations of all portable securing gear. 5. Examples of the correct application of portable securing gear on various cargo units, vehicles and other entities carried on the ship. 6. 
a table of Hatchwise forces for individual rows. 7. Geometric metacentric heights, or GM values, applicable to each container bay. 8. Illustrations depicting lashing arrangements for the securing of 40-foot containers, as well as high cube and oversized containers. The IMO's guidelines for the preparation of the cargo securing manual states, under general information, the guidance given herein should by no means rule out the principles of good seamanship. Neither can it replace experience in stowage and securing practice. The guidelines also state that when new or alternative types of cargo securing devices are introduced, the CSM should be revised accordingly. The alternative cargo securing devices should be as strong as the devices they replace. The CSM is prepared prior to a ship entering seagoing service. Therefore, information provided for various stowage and securing scenarios are for pre-approved load conditions taken into account when the ship was designed. It follows that container weight distributions illustrated in a CSM may not cover all permutations and eventualities to which the ship may be exposed. CSMs also do not necessarily cover every bit of information provided by the ship's loading computer. The CSM may not have been updated when new items or models of container lashing gear were supplied to a particular ship. Therefore, new officers unaware of this scenario would continue relying on partly obsolete information. It is best to make a note of any known limitations until these have been addressed and endorsed by the Ship's Classification Society. As with CSMs, loading computers must also be approved. Amongst other parameters, these computers contain cargo lashing programs that are to be used in conjunction with the Ship's approved CSM. Typically, loading computers provide users with the following information and warnings, complementing information contained in CSMs. 1. Examples of forces acting on cargo units that can be expected in various stowage positions on board in adverse sea conditions. 2. Facilities for automatic monitoring of total, individual stack weights. 3. Alarms, when stack weights exceed the designed maximum stack weights. 4. Angles of roll and corresponding geometric metacentric heights. 5. Examples of how to calculate the number and strength of portable securing devices required to counteract the forces referred to in the preceding paragraph. 6. Safety factors to be used for different types of portable cargo securing devices. And 7. Wind-induced healing moments. Most modern loading computers provide strength and stability calculations and cargo planning together with the vessel's management facilities all in one program. The U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration regulations infer that if questions arise as to how containers or cargoes are to be stowed on board a particular ship, the ship's approved CSM should be referred to. Stevedoring personnel working on board container ships at U.S. ports are not allowed to perform work on top of containers that can be avoided to the extent feasible by proper use of positive container securing devices. Such devices include semi-automatic twist locks or lift locks, on-deck cell guides and safety stackers. Positive container securing devices secure containers automatically and therefore do not require stevedores to work on top of containers. The term positive container securing devices has been used to allow for innovative technological improvements. Therefore, whenever a new procedure or a new type of positive container securing device is developed, which eliminates the need for stevedores to perform tasks on top of containers, that new procedure or device must be used. When containers are loaded and discharged by lifting devices other than container gantry cranes, OSHA recognizes that using semi-automatic twist locks is not feasible. Container gantry cranes provide a four-point suspension system by which containers are lifted and landed vertically off and onto their stacks without manual assistance. The precise placement capabilities afforded by these cranes facilitates the use of semi-automatic twist locks. Container spreaders suspended from a single crane hook, on the other hand, prevent the use of semi-automatic twist locks. 
This is due primarily to instability of these lifting devices. These crane operators are unable to replace containers onto their stacks without manual assistance. OSHA therefore requires the use of positive container securing devices only when container gantry cranes are used to handle containers. Positive container securing devices linking two or more containers horizontally cannot be properly installed without stevedore's assistance. In this situation, if stevedores wear or are equipped with appropriate safety gear, it is an exception to OSHA's conditions for stevedores working on top of containers. Another exception to OSHA regulations is when a stevedore may be required to go on top of a container only to perform a function that cannot be eliminated by the use of positive container securing devices alone, or where a positive container securing device has failed to automatically lock or unlock a container. A further example of an exception to OSHA's requirements is when a stevedore standing on deck is trying to unlock a container stowed in a high tier by means of a long lashing pole. It could be difficult for the stevedore to control the pole from swinging back and forth. This might create a greater hazard for other stevedores working around him. In this case, the stevedore could be allowed to go on top of the containers to unlock those stacked upwards of the fourth tier provided he is wearing and is equipped with appropriate safety gear. Further examples of where stevedores may be required to work on top of containers include installing or removing bridge clamps, hooking up or detaching over-height containers, or freeing a jammed semi-automatic twist lock. With the wide variance in working practices throughout the United States, the rules covering positive container securing devices may be a pitfall especially to charterers of non-cellular type vessels who have assumed responsibility for the stowage and securing of containers. If problems arise with stevedores regarding positive container securing devices not having been used on a particular vessel, it could well be the charterer's responsibility to settle any disputes arising directly with the stevedores or the port authority. The attention of masters is drawn to the wording of charter parties, so that they are aware of who is responsible for the stowage and securing of containers. Ship owners' responsibilities in ensuring that containers can safely be carried on board are summarized as follows. 1. Owners should provide and maintain an adequate supply of the various items of container fittings required for each of their ships, as per the requirements of individual CSMs. Two. Owners with the assistance of ship's crews must ensure that all items of container lashing and securing equipment are properly maintained and are of the required strength. 3. An owner's appointed classification society should warrant the adequacy of the design of container securing arrangements. 4. Owners should ensure that a certified comprehensive cargo stowage and securing manual is carried on board at all times and that the ship's officers understand how to use the manual. 5. Owners must ensure that CSMs are kept updated in respect of any new type approved items of container lashing equipment that may be introduced by the classification society of a particular ship.